the third colligative property is the depression in freezing point the freezing point of a substance will decrease when a solute is added so what is the freezing point freezing point of a liquid is the temperature at which the liquid form and its solid form are at equilibrium so this is so when the vapor pressure of the two forms are equal at the same temperature so the vapor pressure of the solid form and the liquid form will become equal so that is the freezing point this is graphically represented like this so here you can take uh, the plot of the vapor pressure versus temperature so here you can see the two curves two vapor pressure curves first one is the vapor pressure curve of the solvent and uh, below is the vapor pressure curve of the solution so here when a solute is added the vapor pressure of the solution uh, decreases when compared to the pure solvent therefore the vapor pressure curve of the solution is below the vapor pressure curve of the solvent so in order to find the freezing point uh, we have to extrapolate the graph uh, and find the corresponding temperatures at the lower side that is at the low temperature region so here the solvent is freezing at uh, temperature t and the solution will be freezing at a temperature t sol that is s sol represents the solution so there is a difference in the temperature so the temperature of the solvent decreased when a certain amount of solution is been added so this is the difference in temperature that is delta t f f denotes the freezing point so this difference in temperature is directly proportional to the pressure difference that is the difference in the uh, vapor pressure so that is delta tf will be proportional to delta p that is the lowering of the vapor pressure when the solute is added so this delta p is in turn proportional to the number of moles of the solute xb and therefore the equation becomes delta tf is equal to k into xp and xb is equal to nb divided by na plus nb just like in the previous case so we are replacing the na and nb using the following terms wb by mb and wa by ma and the equation uh, delta tf will be equal to k into nb divided by wa into ma here nb is the number of moles of b that is uh, derived from wb divided by mb and again we can replace uh, a few terms using a constant k so delta tf is equal to k into ma into m m is the molarity of the solution so the equation becomes delta tf is equal to kf into m so these two terms k into ma is replaced by another constant called kf the previous case it was kb and here the constant is kf which is representing the freezing point a uh, depression constant so the molar depression constant or the molar cryoscopic constant so kf it can be defined as the depression in freezing point when one mole of one volatile uh, one mole of non volatile solute is dissolved per kilogram of solvent so here in this equation if you are substituting m uh, with one that is if one molar is taken then delta tf must be exactly equal to kf so kf that is the molar depression constant or molar cryoscopic constant is equal to the depression in freezing point that is delta tf when 
one mole of a non volatile solute is dissolved per kilogram that is uh, 1 kg or 1000 gram of the solvent so this is the unit kelvin by mole or degree celsius by mole let us see the problem here the freezing point of a solution containing 18 grams of a non volatile solute is dissolved in 200 grams of water and uh, the freezing point is 272.08 kelvin so in this problem uh, the mass of the solute is given which is the 18 gram then mass of the solvent that is water is given which is 200 gram then the value of kf is given which is 1.86 kelvin per mole and you are asked to calculate the molecular mass of the solute so we can uh, get the value of delta tf that is the depression in freezing point also so the actual freezing point of water is 0 degree celsius that is 273 kelvin so 273 minus the uh, depression in freezing point that is after adding the solute that is 272.08 kelvin so delta tf is 0 0.92 and again uh, if you are substituting all these values in the formula of molecular mass mb is equal to kf into wb into 1000 divided by delta tf into wa you get the value as 181.96 the next problem a solution of uh, sucrose of molecular mass 342 is prepared by dissolving 34.2 grams of it in 1000 grams of water find the freezing point of the solution and kf for water is 1.86 kelvin per mole here you are given the mass of the solute uh, which is 34.28 gram and the mass of the solvent that is water is 1000 gram and uh, KF value is also known and the molecular mass of the solute is also given so taking the formula again delta T is equal to 1000 into KF into WB divided by MB into WA you have to substitute all the values and get the uh, depression in freezing point value that is delta TF which is 0 0.186 Kelvin so again the freezing point of the solution is equal to the freezing point of water minus this delta TF that is 273 minus 0 0.186 so the answer is 272.814 Kelvin now the fourth colligative property is osmotic pressure so osmosis it is actually the process in which uh, the solvent molecules will uh, um, tend to penetrate a semi permeable membrane and um, it get into the solution so if two medium that is the solvent and the solution is separated by a semi permeable mem membrane like a parchment paper or a colloidon or the walls of living cell or any animal membranes uh, all these can be employed as semi permeable membranes so if a solution and a pure solvent is separated using a membrane we note that the concentration of uh, the solvent molecules in the solution will be lesser therefore uh, from the um, solvent uh, part the solvent molecules will try to penetrate the semi permeable membrane and reach the solution so this process is called that is uh, the phenomenon of passage of a pure solvent into a solution through a semi permeable membrane is called osmosis it can also be defined uh, in terms of 
uh, two solutions being separated by a semi permeable membrane and the concentration of the two solutions being different in such a case uh, the solvent will flow, fr flow from a solution of low solute concentration to that of high concentration so let us understand uh, osmotic pressure so osmotic pressure is the equilibrium hydrostatic pressure on a solution due to osmosis of the pure solvent into it in a and it is a measure of the osmotic pressure so the, equi uh, the equilibrium hydrostatic pressure on a solution due to the osmosis effect that is due to the transport of pure solvent into the solution so this is a measure of the osmotic pressure and it is defined as the excess pressure which must be applied to a solution to prevent the passage of solvent into it through the semi permeable membrane and osmotic pressure is denoted using the term pi so osmotic pressure can be related to the number of moles n by this thermodynamic equation that is pi v is equal to nrt this is actually a form of the equation pv is equal to nrt here in the case of p we are uh, taking pi that is the osmotic pressure so pi is equal to nrt by v and again pi is equal to mrt here n by v is the m that is the molarity of the solution therefore pi is equal to mrt this is how the osmotic pressure is related to the number of moles of the solute and this is in turn a colligative property so this equation pi v is equal to n rt and pi is equal to n divided by v into rt this is the van hoff's solution equation and we are able to determine the molecular weight of a solute from this van hoff's equation for that in the van hoff equation uh, we have to substitute uh, the term wb by mb so the equation becomes mb is equal to wb rt divided by pi v here the number of moles is being substituted by wb divided by mp so the molecular weight of the solute is uh, wb into rt divided by pi into v so pi that is osmotic pressure and the molecular weight or molecular mass of the solute is related by this equation and a few problems are given in the text this is problem 6 osmotic pressure of a solution uh, of uh, 7.6 grams of a solute is 100 centimeter cube of water at 300 kelvin is 25 millimeter of mercury calculate the molecular mass of solute so you have to write down the formula of uh, osmotic pressure uh, relating the number of moles pi v is equal to n b into r t here the osmotic uh, pressure is given in the terms of millimeter per mercury so you have to convert it into atmospheric pressure therefore 25 divided by 760 has to be done 25 divided by 760 atmospheric pressure again the volume of the solution is given as 100 centimeter cube so you have to convert it into liter that is 100 divided by 1000 liter and the temperature is at 300 kelvin and the value of r that is the red box gas constant is also known to you that is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole per kelvin therefore the value of nb can be derived from all these um, 
values that is mb is equal to approximately 7.6 divided by mb now substituting uh, these values you can get uh, the value of mb as 56905.15 this is problem 6 now you have to take the problem 7 into consideration that is the calculate the osmotic pressure of a solution containing 3.42 grams of sucrose per liter at 400 kelvin the molecular mass of sucrose is 342 and the value of r that is the uh, Rydberg's gas constant is also given so you have to write down the formula pi is equal to nb divided by vrt then the number of uh, moles of solute that is nb is equal to the weight of solute divided by molar mass of solute so here the weight of solute that is sucrose is given 3.42 grams of sucrose per liter this is the weight wb and divided by the molar mass of sucrose that is 342 so the number of moles of solute nb is equal to 0 0.01 then the volume of the solution is 1 liter here the solution containing this, this much grams per liter is given so it is 1 liter the volume is 1 liter again the temperature value is 400 Kelvin so from this formula you can get the value of pi as 0 0.328 atmosphere So next section you have the reverse osmosis so reverse osmosis it is a process by which an applied pressure greater than the osmotic pressure is exerted on the compartment that once contain a high concentration solution so reverse osmosis is uh, actually uh, having many technological application it is used for demineralization process desalination process etc so in order to understand osmosis and reverse osmosis uh, picture is given in your text so in the first case osmosis is happening so a fresh water uh, and a salt water is separated by a semi permeable membrane here in fresh water uh, the solvent uh, molecules that is the water molecules concentration is higher so automatically the water molecule through the semi permeable membrane it will penetrate and enter the salt water because in the salt water uh, uh, there is salt content but the salt molecules will not uh, be permitted to enter the semi permeable membrane so uh, the content of uh, water molecule the solvent molecules is lesser here therefore more water molecules from the uh, fresh water compartment will enter into the salt water this is the process of osmosis so in the case of reverse osmosis actually this happens under the exertion of a pressure so in the uh, salt water compartment we are exerting a certain amount of pressure so when a pressure is exerted uh, all the water molecules from the salt water compartment will penetrate the semi permeable membrane and enter this fresh water compartment so this is a reverse process so the first one was osmosis and the second is the reverse osmosis which is happening under the application of a certain pressure so only the water to uh, which external pressure is applied uh, filters through so this is the process of reverse osmosis so reverse osmosis is having many uh, technological application let us see the applications of reverse osmosis 
so reverse osmosis is a pressure driven membrane process uh, which has been widely applied and recognized as a leading technology of desalination process and improvement in reverse osmosis technology including advanced membrane material then module and process design and energy recovery has led to cost reduction which in turn gaining interest to its commercial applications so in this technology uh, so much research works has been done and as a result of this so many improvement in this technology has been uh, uh, brought about like improvement in the semi permeable membrane and uh, technology driven um, process and the design of the whole process so all these uh, because of all these um, factors the cost of this technology has been reduced therefore uh, this technology has attracted a lot of scientific interest as a result this reverse osmosis is now being used for various applications including selective separation purification and concentration process so in food industry also the reverse osmosis is applied for concentration of uh, fruits and vegetable juice pre concentration of milk and de alcoholization of alcoholic beverages so all these are the various applications of reverse osmosis or ro again for area which has a large source of natural humic water or peat water ro can be applied to produce clean water for community water supply this is another application so there are uh, uh, so many applications given in this section and uh, finally there is a section called the abnormal molecular mass so in this section uh we have to uh, revise the previous concepts of colligative properties so we said that all the colligative properties are uh, directly uh, proportional to the uh, mole fraction of the solute and from those colligative properties mathematical expressions we were able to calculate the molecular weight of the solute so this is a general uh, condition which can be applied uh, to all the colligative properties but in certain cases the solute molecules might undergo some changes when it is dissolved in the solvent so in such cases uh, when um, the solute particles is undergoing uh, certain changes in the uh, solvent molecules some abnormal values of colligative properties are observed therefore the abnormal values of the molecular masses will also be ob observed so this is actually due to processes like association or dissociation undergone by the solute molecules inside the solvent so in the cases of association or dissociation the actual uh, molar mass calculated uh, will be different from the observed one so let us see an example so when benzoic acid is dissolved in benzene it undergoes dimerization due to hydrogen bonding so this is the chemical structure of benzoic acid c6h5 c double bond o oh so these benzoic acid molecules uh, will undergo a dimerization when it is dissolved in benzene this is because the polar part that is the one with the functional group it will 
come closer and associate through hydrogen bonding and the non polar part will be oriented towards the benzene solvent so this is a typical case of association and it has been found that the molecular mass obtained from uh, such cases so it is um, deviating so it is uh, different from the actual molecular mass of the uh, solvent so let us see another example in the case of uh, some strong electrolytes like nacl so nacl when it is dissolved in water it ionizes forming na plus and cl minus so if the uh, number of moles uh, of solute was actually one that is nacl is contributing one but when it entered into the solution the number of moles increased so the number of solute particles in solution uh, is approximately doubled here so such type of changes will also affect the colligative properties therefore um, there is an unexpected increase in colligative property here so the molecular mass is almost half of the theoretical value so in this case also almost all electrolytes when dissolved in uh, water uh, this type of behavior is observed because mostly the strong electrolytes undergo complete ionization like this in solvents so therefore the abnormal value of molecular mass is observed so association as well as dissociation will give abnormal molecular masses so the molecular masses calculated for those solutes undergoing association or dissociation will be abnormal therefore another factor which is known as the van hoff factor has been introduced so van hoff factor uh, is introduced to account for all abnormal cases so van hoff introduced the factor i which is a van hoff factor and i is equal to the normal molecular mass divided by the observed molecular mass or it can also be uh, given as i is equal to the observed colligative properties divided by the normal colligative properties so in the case of association uh, the value of i will be less than unity so if the solute is associating in the solvent just like in the case of benzoic acid and benzene the value of i will be less than 1 and in the case of dissociation as in the case of nacl the value will be greater than unity so when 100 percent ionization occurs the values are equal to the number of ions given by the molecule in solution for example in the case of nacl kno3 etc so all these are strong electrolytes therefore it will ionize to 100 percent so in such case the value of i is equal to the number of ions given by this molecule that is na cl will give two ions na plus and cl minus therefore the value will be two itself so when van hoff factor is introduced in the equation for colligative properties uh, the modified forms like this can be obtained so the elevation in boiling point the equation becomes delta t b is equal to i into k b into m similarly the depression in freezing point delta t f is equal to i into k f into m and also the osmotic pressure pi is equal to i into n r t so what is the van hoff factor van hoff factor is given by the equation normal molecular mass divided by observed molecular mass 
or it is also expressed as observed colligative properties divided by the normal colligative properties. So in the case of 100% ionization, the value of I will be equal to the number of ions given by the molecule in the solution. For example, in the case of NaCl or KNO3, the value of I is equal to 2. So, the general equations of uh, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and the osmotic pressure has been modified uh, by introducing the Van Hoff factor in all these equations. So, these are the resulting equations. So, these are the important questions from the section. So, what is osmotic pressure? Define that a mole fraction. And then, uh, what is meant by colligative properties? So, colligative properties are those properties which depend only on the number of moles but not on the nature of the um, uh, solute particles. It only depend on the relative number of solute particles. So, all these are possible questions. So, please revise thoroughly. So, here write a note on reverse osmosis and its application in industry. Uh, you can also expect questions like this in the ESA and the uh, B part section. Okay. Thank you.